Just from the audience, put Dave on the spot. The best part of the night. So, got any volunteers out there? When you're doing your demos, you've got a really good voice. Oh, thank you. And so, I'm sure when you're a demo, that quality is going to make it a lot easier to sell that song. Someone's not going to sing as well as that. Right. I would suggest getting a, a really good demo singer. Uh, there's a there's a lot of really good singers out there, and um, you can find those uh, through NSAI. And um, uh, I'm not sure who, who else I'm. I, I, I generally sing my own stuff, although a, a guy named Doug Stokes is, is sang for me. He's a great singer, and he's a right-on singer. Um, um, let's see, uh, I'm trying to think of some other guys. Uh, one guy that writes for us, his name is Nolan Neal. He's a monster singer. Uh, he's more of a rock alternative guy, but he can sing country and, and, and really make it believable. Um, but I would suggest that, you know, if you don't sing that well, um, you know, because it, it's very, very important for somebody to, to hear something, hear a song, and, and, you know, it being sold to them, you know, by the person's voice. Very important. Joe? I like to try to forget those years. <laughs> well, thanks a lot for bringing it up. <laughs> no. no, it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, there's been some years that uh, after I left the Gibson Miller Band in, in 94, uh, I sort of, uh, I met my wife Daisy and um, we just sort of traveled all over the place singing together and, and, uh, and, and writing. I still had I was riding a tree at the time, uh, had another year on my contract there. I kept on writing, kept on writing. I did a project with one of my buddies, a songwriter. And, um, you know, I wanted to do something on my own. Um, I, I put a band together, uh, I, did, I did some things, uh, just, you know, just sort of did what I wanted to do. But I kept on writing. I, I, it's so one of the things that I, I, you know, I just can't stop writing songs, and I just, uh, I just wanted so much, so much to happen, you know. Uh, although I wasn't doing it like I, I had when I first came to Tampa, you know. I, I sort of like, you know, something I've earned a little time. <laughs> I've learned, that, you know, I was on the road for two years and beat my head against the wall, and you know, that's just what how you do it, you know, when you're trying to make it as an artist. If you don't have a hit right away, like Billy Ray, you know some people that, that, that do. But um, it, it was it was so important uh, for me to to keep on writing. And it was not until about 98, 99 that I had uh, my next hit. And um, and that was Lonely and Gone, House of the Point, Lonely and Gone with Montgomery Gentry. And um, that was a and I, and I got, it had some cuts in that in that length of time too. It had a, um, oh, a Sammy Kershaw cut, and I had a couple other cuts that I can't, can't remember exactly. But they, the you know the, the only hit that I had was was uh, was only and gone. And um, and you know to tell you the truth, I mean it's it's kind of been that way. Um, Ninety nine, two thousand. You know that was. That was when uh, that was when I had my hit, and I have uh, done a lot of production projects. In the meantime, I tried to keep, tried to maintain my uh, my presence in the music business because I saw a lot of my friends, a lot of them moved down to town. I mean, and they started doing other things. You know, uh, hit songwriters. Uh, one of my buddies just he's gone. I mean, he's just like out of the business, you know, and I'm like, you know something, I will not be run out of this town, <laughs> you know, I, just because I haven't had a hit in a while, that doesn't mean, you know, look at Bill Anderson, look what he did in his career, you know, I mean, he's, he's one of my, 
buddies, and, and, I, and I just I love Bill, and I love his attitude that he changed it. You know, he was sort of in the old school, and, and I think somebody, he, he didn't tell me who exactly, who exactly it was that told him this, but he went in to play songs for somebody, and, and, um, and they said, well, <laughs> that'd be a good song if Jeannie Seeley was still cutting. <laughs> and, you know, like, it really just killed him, you know, really hurt his feelings, and, and, he, and he just got so mad, and... and <clears throat> sort of went off for a while and, and you know but he didn't let it get him down he, <laughs> Vince Gill and a lot of the people that uh, were coming up at that time and uh, making it, making things happen they loved Bill they loved his songs and they started writing with him and they wanted to write with him and, and they really brought him out of himself you know and, and, and he came out of himself you know because he's a brilliant writer you know and so Anytime, you know, I mean, to tell you the truth, I, I, this is the first uh, single that I've had since Lonely and Gone, you know, and, and, I, and I was just like, you know, I'm singing it, so it's, it's kind of cool. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. All right, um, let me see. How many uh, relative uh, newbies do we have in the audience who've only been in Nashville less than a year? All right. How about a question from one of you folks? Anything? Anybody got something they want to ask Dave? Yeah. Right here. Well, we just geared up our label, and we started out with a publishing company uh, almost two years ago, and uh, we have like seven writers now, and. Uh, we wanted, that was our goal in the first place, was to, to be able to have the funding to, to start our label and everything. But the best way to build something is from the ground up. And what's the ground? What does everything start with? A song. And that's been my philosophy ever since I, I moved to town here. And that was drilled into my head, you know, by Maggie Cavender, who said that she coined the phrase. <laughs> It all begins with a song, and that's why we started the company with the publishing uh, arm of it first. So then we would have a, a, a catalog of songs, of, you know, a couple hundred, or you know, however many we have, probably close to 200 now. And you've got to have that many in order to to get things going. And, and then we decided that we were going to to, to gear our label up. So we found the right person that was going to to come in and do that for us, and she's just been great. She's uh, she's a very um, uh, she's actually doesn't live here, but she will be living here in, as of January. And um, she's a uh, she's got a big you know long background in, in the radio and, and promotion and marketing. So that yes, it has been a challenge. To answer your question, because having that song king me on hold with all these different people, it's like you people can't hear <laughs> two train wrecks, you know, <laughs> you know. I mean, oh well, anyway, you know, and that's a negative thing to say. <laughs> but, no, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, it's okay, it's okay, I and mean, I have to tell it myself. It's like, but I was. You know, when, when it came off a hole that time, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. You know, you're not going to get that song. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but you have to understand how the business works, you know. A lot of times, if, if there's not, somebody doesn't, isn't part of it, or this isn't part of it, you know, it may not work, even though, you know, they might turn down a hit song. But that's okay. It's not supposed to be where you think it's supposed to be, you know, supposed to be, because we don't control anything. And if you look at it like that, if you, if you look at it like this song, I know this song in my heart, and, and, and if everybody else tells you that too in the, in the business, you know, you, you just can't listen to yourself a lot, a lot of times. If people come up to you and say, that's a smash, every time you play that song, every time somebody hears, that's a smash, that song is going to be a hit, then you, you know, I mean, you, you, you can believe it in yourself, in, you know, yourself, but... If everybody else in the business is, is right along with you, you know, you just hang in there because, you know, 
uh, songs never die. They, they are our uh, legacy. And it can be a hit, like I said, 10, 20 years. It doesn't matter, you know. It, it's, so, yeah, it's, 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 it's been a challenge uh, to get our songs out there, you know. But now we're starting to happen. We have a uh, uh, Kevin Grant who writes for us, who's a fantastic bass player, if people know him by swine here in town. He uh, co-produces Daryl Worley and uh, Jamie Johnson. And um, he has just uh, gotten us a, a cut on Daryl's new album. Uh, and it's all because, you know, he's in there. And you figure out a way to get it. You know, you can figure out a way to do it. So that's kind of what we're doing. Folks that were on that uh, the young aspiring writers list that had your hands up before, raise your hands. Who was going to ask a question? Uh, let's see. Uh, no, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Uh, where was that young, picking young lady? All those girls, all those pretty girls, had their hands up, and all of a sudden they all disappeared. What happened? <laughs> the gentleman right here who had his hand up. Yeah. A lot of your ballads, like the King. I, I know you, you've heard of the, uh, the cliche, these 15 minute songs, and then these songs that take two weeks to write. Right. Um, I personally, my family and my friends like my 15 minute songs. The ones that I, did, that I struggled with, they kind of like, hey, keep on working with But I've got one song that even my band want to include. It took me three Bud Lights to write it. <laughs> And, and sometimes I mean, the best stuff. Is that normal? I mean, like I'm really being more successful with school for me. Take a long time to write for it. It's like it's like what I said. It's like there there is no rule about how long it takes. Danny Flowers wrote Tulsa Time in 30 minutes. And hello. <laughs> it's like you know, there is no rule about how long it takes anybody to write anything. And there's been songs written in 10 minutes, you know. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy Hall wrote Keep On Smiling in 20 minutes. <laughs> Still so minutes. you just never know. I mean, if the, if the magic hits you, and that's another thing, is that if, if, if you get something that's just gnawing at you that in the middle of the night, you better get it. Get up and write it down or get a guitar or whatever. Whatever you need to do and put it down. Because you might you might lose something that that is could make you a million dollars, you know. Sir. All right, we got time for one more quick right question. Here. Uh, just a, a business question. Now that you've got a publishing company, are you in control of the publishing of some of your uh, Maypop and NEM and uh, Silverline catalog? Do you have that in the Savannah catalog now? Oh, oh, do I have some of that yeah. publishing? Yeah. You know. I have brought some of the, uh, I actually didn't get a co-publishing deal until I was writing for a, uh, a company called Nocturnal Eclipse Music, it was the NEM music, and that's that's when I, I, I first, but how I got that, I, my first two deals with, with the Oprah's Boys and with Maypop Music, I had none of my publishing. So I don't have any of the publishing on Ships That Don't Come In or, or Jukebox In My Mind come easy in any of those any of the songs that I had during the, the period of those publishing companies. But the NEM catalog, uh, I do have half of my publishing and all the stuff we cut as a band. And then like I have a quarter of the publishing on, on uh, Queen of Memphis and, and uh, you know, uh, a few of the other songs that I had at that time. And uh, uh, so I'm bringing those those things in to my uh, to our catalog with Savannah. So, yeah, it's hard to get co-publishing deals these days. Um, it's sort of back to where it was when I first came to town. Nobody wants to pay any money, and, and it's because it's 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 so difficult, you know, to, to make money in the business uh, because of, of the, the low rates that writers and publishers get. You know, nine percent or eight point whatever. Nine point one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, that, that's a, as far as I'm concerned, that that's a travesty, you know. But you know, one of these days, maybe it'll change. But you know, it's just... now it's another fun part of the evening. Yes, we're gonna, we're gonna move on. Yes. We're gonna move on, otherwise we won't get everybody in. First of all, let's say thanks to Dave. Dave, so thank you.
let's hear it for Dill for doing a wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you. Alright, so we're going to move on to the next thing. Dave's going to stay with us for a little while longer.